Wherever there are lovers of music, the name of Gangubai Hangu is mentioned with reverence and admiration. She is now in her 70s, but her command over the intricacies of the Hindustani style of classical music continues to be supreme, and her voice is as vibrant and powerful as ever. It is no wonder that she has been holding audiences spellbound for over half a century. Gangubai was born in Darbad in 1930. Her mother, Ambabai, was a singer of Karnataka style. But she liked the Hindustani style very much. Ambabai moved from Darbad to Hubli. There, a family friend, Dattopan Desai, persuaded the maestro of Kirana Gharana, Savai Gandhar, to accept Gangubai as his disciple. It meant travelling every day by train, starting early in the morning and returning late at night. Being a girl, she could not stay at the Guru's house, as disciples like Bhimsen Joshi did. Her uncle Ramachandra Hangul was her escort. It was a tiresome and long journey in those days, but Gangubai put up with the hardship. She lived in her own world of music and thought of her lessons while she travelled. days, the profession of singing was not considered respectable, and in particular, girls learning music were looked down upon. As she walked the mile to the Guru's house, people would come out of their houses, stare at her, and pass rude remarks. Gangubai put up with such treatment, and concentrated on her music. I 
Today, Kangubai has come a long way. The young girl steadfastly pursuing her lessons from her guru has become one of the leading exponents and teachers of the Kirana Gharana. What is this? You must not rush forward. Every note is special and valuable. You must use your notes fully to build up sequence after sequence. Come, start again. A good guru is ever watchful that the tradition is carried on. He considers himself responsible for any mistakes that the disciple may commit, even unwittingly. Gangubai recalls an incident about Savai Gandharv when she started going to Bombay to sing in radio programs. I had to sing several ragas and what I had learned from Guruji was not enough. I was too scared to ask him to coach me for a radio performance. So I would learn ragas from some books like Bhatkhandes and sing. I thought I would never be found out by Guruji, as Kungol had no electricity, no radio. But as luck would have it, he invariably heard my radio program. One day, we both happened to be returning by the same train to Hubli, and Guruji said, So you sang Vibhas on radio with a soft dhaivat. In our gharana, we always sing with a sharp dhaivat. When you have to sing new ragas, why don't you ask me to coach you? People blame me when you sing improperly. He then started to teach me Malhar there and then in the train. The passengers and hawkers started laughing at us, but it did not bother him at all. <laughs> teacher gives all that he knows to his disciples. He is a light in the darkness. Gangubai has been such a leading light to her pupils. No doubt, Gangubai owes her art to her guru, but the passion for music, the urge to train and work hard, she inherited from her mother Ambabai. Ambabai stopped her own singing lest Gangubai's style should get confused. Even though she died 50 years ago, her memory still lives in Gangubai's mind. Gangubai says, She really made great sacrifices on my count. She was only 35 when she died and never lived to see my success. When she died, I just could not sing anymore. There were two men who tried to revive music in Gangubai. Dattopan Desai and her uncle Ramchandra Hangal. They would keep on playing on tabla and tanpura for hours to induce her to sing. But the music in Gangubai seemed to have died with her mother. It was the mother again who revived it. Gangubai says, One day I felt that my mother had sacrificed so much to make an artist out of me. I owed it to her to sing. Soon a gramophone company started cutting discs of Gangubai's music. But her concerts were limited to her home territory of Bombay Presidency. On Jaganbai's recommendation, she was invited for a prestigious music conference in Calcutta. There she faced a peculiar problem. Gangubai recalls, 
I was a homely village product. In Calcutta, when I returned from a visit to the Kali Mandir, a private concert was on and they asked me to sing. I told them that I would sing at the conference the next day. The organizers didn't know what to say. Then, Nisar Hussain Khan Sahib called me aside and said in Marathi, Bai, you look so thin and skinny. They are worried about your program tomorrow. Sing a little, it will assure them. So I sang and they were happy. Next day, my program at the conference went off well and got a gold medal. The Calcutta conference brought fame to Gangubai and she was invited to give concerts in different parts of the country and even abroad. Her journey on the road of success had begun. A grateful nation has shown its appreciation by conferring many honors and awards on her. The academic world, too, acknowledged the excellence of her art by conferring a doctorate on her. Her enthusiasm for new music experiences is boundless, and that is why she had ventured to write music for a film. Today, she must be the only classical woman maestro to have done so. For a girl coming from a backward caste, Without much schooling, carrying on a profession once looked down upon, the road had been long and arduous. It was made a little easy for her by her companion and husband, Gurunath Kolgi. However, as he was a high caste Brahmin, they had to face opposition from society. Tangubai talks about how she came to know him. He liked my music very much. He used to come to my house. Over the years, this relationship grew. Didn't that create difficulties? Yes, it created difficulties. Both our families, and particularly my grandmother and his parents, did not approve of our relationship. We lived in an orthodox society. We had to face many difficulties. When did Mr. Kolegi pass away? He died 16 years ago. And when he died, I was not there. How did that happen? He was in the hospital when I got a program from Bombay. I did not want to go, but he insisted saying he was better. I knew why he wanted me to go. I had a large family to support, and we were always hard pressed for money. As I was going, he said, I wish I could give my life to you. You have given me so much. Tangubai's life has been a life of fulfillment in terms of her art and human relations. Despite the honors and respect that have come her way, her simplicity and humility are disarming. Asked how she felt about her achievements, she said, Naturally, I am glad. But when I hear my tapes and records, or hear people praise my singing, I feel that it could have been much better. You see, music is an ocean. 
a small vessel cannot contain it. There is music in everything, rhythm in every activity. To understand its totality, one lifetime is not enough. But nowadays when I sing, I sometimes experience a fleeting moment of sublime joy. I forget myself. There is a saintly man here. When I told him about this experience, he was taken aback. He said, this is the supreme joy that man seeks. You are blessed to have found it. Perhaps it is this inner bliss which imparts a transcendental quality to her music and crosses all frontiers, touching hearts of young and old alike. According to the ancient Indian tradition, that music is perfect where the swara, that is the notes, the geet, or the words, and the nritya, or dance, blend harmoniously. Gangubai's music attains this perfection. Mm -hmm. 